This next instalment is called Finding Your Platform and it's all about exploring which platforms of communication are going to suit you best, that will suit your learning style and that will suit your natural audience. This is the second of the webinars uh, built around themes from The Art of Shouting Quietly. Uh, and this session is going to focus on public speaking, but in particular, um, your story uh, and a variety of ways that you can tell your story effectively in order to get your message across. Public speaking is uh, number one fear globally. Um, it's interesting when people have done surveys of this, um, a lot of people fear it more than they fear death actually, uh, or fear spiders, or fear catastrophe. Um, the notion of going up on a stage and speaking to a group of people uh, really, really doesn't appeal to them. It fills them full of dread. And it doesn't suit everyone. However, I want to make sure you're not dismissing the idea of public speaking too quickly. There are a small number of people who take to this, like a, a duck to water. Um, but there's a larger number of people who really need to struggle hard um, to master the art of public speaking. And they may never become totally confident at doing it. But on the other hand, they realise that the benefits they can gain from speaking in public far outweigh any of the discomfort uh, that comes with it. I, I like to think about public speaking like this and other methods of telling your story also um, you need to build your confidence but to build your confidence you need to overcome the fear that present, prevents you getting out into your stretch zone but once you're out there and once you're probing the corners of your stretch zone it does become a more familiar place so you go out and you try something new and it is a bit scary but when you've done it when you've met the challenge it does lead to a sense of exhilaration and that sense of exhilaration builds your confidence, it moves you up a couple of rungs up the ladder so you're no longer starting again from the same starting point. And I think if you break it down and think about it like this and you approach self-promotion step by step, overcoming small fears, getting out into the stretch zone becoming familiar with those scary feelings, your confidence will grow. Now we all feel a bit like this sometime, that people are going to find us out, either you know, they're going to find out we don't have as much knowledge as, as we would like to have, or that maybe we're talking about stuff that we're not really fully qualified to talk about. The truth is we all suffer from this. It's, it's actually called imposter syndrome. Uh, I suggest that you go and read about imposter syndrome. It's in the ebook on page 54. We all suffer from this to an extent. And I just want you to know that you're not alone. So if you feel a bit like a fraud, if you feel like you're talking about something where you are not quite yet expert, you know, don't let it stop, it in, stop you in your tracks. We're not all experts in everything, but our expertise grows and develops over time and you're always going to be an expert to somebody else that knows less about the subject or less about your cause. For some people it's simply a matter of practice. You know, you get over the fear, fear in the same way that you get used to scary things like spiders or birds flapping or strange noises in the night, eventually you get used to these things. But you do need to take the time to assimilate to them, to understand when you've got butterflies in your stomach. It, it's not necessarily the sign of something catastrophic about to happen. It's just something that comes with the job. For other people it's a much more complex process, so I suggest you start small, just take this in small bite-sized chunks and eventually your confidence will grow. However, if you hit a brick wall and you find that public speaking is not for you, there are lots of other things you can do and, and those are explain, explained fully in the book um, and as you read through you'll get the idea 
of what I'm talking about. Some people join a speakers club, Toastmasters or something like that. It's a fantastic experience, not least because when you go along to a speakers club, you find out the place is full of people just like you. And in fact, the room will be full of people at all sorts of different levels, from raw beginners through to some really quite experienced speakers. And it's a great way of finding out and talking to lots of people on various rungs of the public speaking ladder. Um, you begin to feel much more normal about your nerves. You begin, begin to feel much more normal about having doubts about whether or not your subject is interesting. And you begin to learn all sorts of tips and tricks about how to practice, about how to inject energy into your speaking, uh, and about how to remember what to say on a very basic level. Uh, all sorts of hints and tips. And, and go to speaking events too, like a Pecha Kucha evening. Now, if you've not heard of Pecha Kucha, uh, it, it's an event format that was invented by a bunch of architects in Japan who are just terribly bored with going to long, boring presentations. And they set a rule that, that at a Pecha Kucha event, uh, each speaker should have no more than 20 slides and that they shouldn't speak about each slide for any more than 20 seconds. And it's a lovely, lively format. And once you've watched a few, you'll probably find yourself thinking, well, you know, I could manage that. The other thing is that Petra Kucha slides tend to be more or less all images. There are very few words on them. If it's a good talk, and using images is magic because people really latch on to them. They get really bored if you've got too many words on the page. So it teaches you about putting together presentations that avoid all of that stuff, bullet point lists. And then once you've experienced enough of that, you might find that you're then ready to participate in some small way. So I want to talk about confidence a little bit. Um, it's important not to battle with your fears. It's much easier just to observe them, um, to let them become familiar, to let some of those feelings wash over you, to get used to the butterflies in your stomach, to get used to, you know, perspiring slightly, all of those things. I remember when I did a, a TED talk last year, um, I really felt quite nauseous for a while before I went on stage. But as soon as I went on stage, I just became absorbed in the process. Even really experienced speakers are nervous, but they've become familiar with those unpleasant situations, those unpleasant sensations, rather. It's interesting. They all get nervous. Some of them will tell you that if you're not nervous, then you're not actually doing it properly. The nerves are an important part uh, of the mix. They give you energy. Shouting about stuff won't sell your ideas. It'll put people off. It's important when you're speaking or when you're creating videos that the message within those talks or within those videos or your webinars or whatever are based around your core values. If you lead with your values, you create empathy, you create trust. People really resonate with each other's values it, it's the secret to building lasting relationships. And the thing that will build and maintain these relationships for you time after time is your story. It's really important to learn how to express your story. If somebody asks you what you do, don't give them a job description. What you must do is you must tell them about your hopes and dreams and your ambitions. That's the thing that they're going to find really interesting. That's the thing that they're going to latch on to. And you never know who's sitting beside you or standing beside you. I've met so many people at events um, almost by accident and we've discovered some kind of interplay between their ideas and mine. Uh, and it's been a really fruitful thing. Again, that connection wouldn't have been made if we hadn't shared the story. If we just told each other what we did, we might have just found that boring and, and walked away from it. 
So you need to nurture the ability to tell your story in a compelling way or find somebody who can help you with this. There's no shame in getting somebody to help you write stuff, to get somebody to help you put together a pitch or to write your blog posts or, or whatever it is you need to do. And all good writers have an editor or they have a writing buddy or at the very least somebody that knows them reasonably well that read through the things that they write, check the spelling, check the grammar, watch out for typos, who help them make sure the structure's correct, the energy's right, and that people are going to engage with it. And it's really hard to do all of those things on your own. Um, it's very rare for somebody being able to come up and, and tell a really effective story without the help of somebody else along the way. So you need to be clear about your values and your drivers. People who buy into your core values will stay loyal to you. It's all about relationships. And this is true of your marketing as well. At the end of the day, all marketing should be about getting to the people, getting other people to the point where they say yes to your proposition. It's all about building relationships. And those relationships, once you've built them, will sustain you over time. What's at the core of you? It may be personal values, it may be business values, it may be your ethics, it may be the thing that underpins your entire project, but make sure that you write them down. It's really important. It's much easier to speak or create video or write a blog when you're talking about the things that really matter. Take a moment to think about the things that really matter to you, the values behind your work and ideas, and make sure that you're connecting those with all of the things that you want to achieve. The three things that matter to me most are my Scottish roots, a sense of community, and, and a desire to collaborate with people. And I always feel really solid, I always feel really confident when these things are my reference points. So self-knowledge is a major key to confidence. Collaboration is really important to me in the way that I work, and I know it comes from the way that I was brought up as a child. You know, the community worked together for the greater good through bad times and good times, celebrating things, commiserating with each other when things went wrong. And I'm sure you know what I'm talking about there, it's important to connect with those deep internal themes that you have. So what are your anchors? What is it that you'll feel most confident talking about? Ponder that for a little while. It's important to use strong images in your presentations. I draw mine, I use an iPad and a... And a uh, one of those stick drawing things, <laughs> I've forgotten the proper name for them, um, a stylus, that's the word. Uh, but you can use photographs, uh, stock images, or, or your own drawings. Um, but images are good. People really resonate with images, and I'll explain a bit more about that as we go through these four instalments. If you use strong images, they'll help you remember what to say. Each image becomes a cue for you. It triggers a bit of thinking that says, ah, yes, I remember what this is about now. And it actually cuts down the requirement for notes. However, if you do need notes, use individual cards for each slide and just write one or two words on them. Don't write a word-for-word -word script. It, it's boring to listen to you'll end up with your presentation going wonky at some point because you will lose the place. It's much better just to have keywords and allow the keywords to trigger, trigger um, some free association around which you can talk. Cards with major themes, major points you want to make. Speak from your heart. If you do this, people will forgive your nervousness. I would much rather listen to a nervous speaker that spoke with honesty and passion than to somebody that was really slick and almost politician-like in their presentation. 
it, it's you know it's almost harder to trust isn't it it's really important also to make eye contact with your audience and that you need you need to scan around the room i call it the lighthouse technique make sure your eyes go backwards and forwards across the horizon connecting with people all four corners of the room in the middle of the audience people up close people really far away when people get that eye contact, they, they get absorbed in what you're saying, they really believe it a lot more, they become much more tolerant as an audience, and if you make a few slips or hiccups, they really will begin to forgive you for that. It's a way of bringing people onto your side. Keep your presentations as short as you can and use only as many slides as you need to get your point across clearly. Remember the Petra Kutcher rules, 20 slides, 20 seconds a slide. It's astonishing how much information you can get into the seven minutes and few seconds that that provides for. And if you can give your audience a handout or a worksheet with your web address on it, so much the better because they'll keep that, they'll remember it and then they, when they need some ideas or they need to contact you they'll follow the web address and, and find you again. This is what you want. You want audience response like this. And you will get it if you just simply follow these rules. So here's the assignment that goes with the public speaking. And again, it involves reading the book, read the pros and cons of public speaking. It starts in the ebook at page 110. But I'd also like you to think about this. Set yourself a goal to speak in public, even if it's to a very small group, and or refresh your online presence to tell your story more effectively, perhaps by using a short video of you talking about your work or talking about your ambitions. Every time you do this, you'll become better at it. Every time you do it, it gets easier. Every time you do it, you will become more relaxed and then you will become a habitual, strong public speaker. And it's really great to be able to get up spontaneously and you will be able to do this given time to get up spontaneously and talk about your work because you will have internalised a lot of those core values. You'll have the images in your head and you'll be able to speak much more spontaneously much more authentically. At the end of every instalment, um, I'd like to encourage you to complete this personal action plan. The rules for the plan are, are very, very simple. Um, once you've done your thinking, break the action down into bite-sized chunks, uh, small steps that you can take easily. Um, jot down each individual piece of action to be taken. Set yourself a target for the date by which you'd like to have it done uh, and make some notes about how you're going to do it and who can help you along the way. Um, keep a hold of these action plans. You're able to download this pro forma each time you need to use it. Uh, and over time, you'll build up a record of all of your goals and targets and how well you've moved towards achieving them.